Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, and someone is detonating fireworks outside my window. Hopefully that won't be a problem, as we go into chapter 2, not counting the prologue, um, so I guess chapter 3, of Mirror's Edge, which is a brilliant game and you should all go play it. So my voice is still a bit fucked up because I'm still in flare-ups of stuff from coronavirus, but that shouldn't be a problem either, so let's go. Something's got somebody rattled, kiddo. I don't know what it is, but they're mighty jittery. Hey, Cell. Take long to lose them? Nah, those blues can't live for shit. They've gotten a little gun happy, though. Wires are fizzing about Pope's murder. Blue traffic is up. Way up. Don't know what's got into them. Must be contract renewal time. Be careful out there, Cell. So why all the heat? Our girl's been lifting evidence from a crime scene. Now every cop in the city seems to be after her. That the evidence you lifted? Yeah, I think it's from a diary. Rest of it was gone. All I can make out are Icarus, maybe. And to the highest. Icarus. Wasn't he the Greek guy? Yeah, his dad made him some wings out of feathers and wax. Then the boy flew too close to the sun. And pss, no more wings, no more Icarus. If anyone's heard anything, then you know who it'll be, Faith. Yeah? I know he ain't a runner anymore, but he's got contacts. You can't avoid him forever. Wanna bet? Who? Jackknife. Drake's got a location on Jackknife. He's on some rooftops at the old runner training ground near the storm drains. Roots crawling with blues, though. You can follow the canals to the Hampton Town District. Get going. As janky as those cutscenes are, I do really love the way that they indicate the easy friendships between these people, both through the body language and the um, vocal performances. You really do get the sense that they are friends who've known each other for a long time. So there's a lot to say about the city in this game. And uh, the authorities are investigating the death of attorney and mayoral candidate Robert Pope, who was found shot dead in his offices earlier. It's interesting and it's full of incidental detail, but it's kind of interesting how little- there I go again, it's kind of interesting, constantly, constantly. Anyway, um, it is interesting because this city is very um, metaphorical and allegorical. It does not exist to be a real place that performs real functions. Uh, so yeah, it exists for the purpose of telling a story, shut up policeman, and making a point. However, like, it is also presented as a literal place. You know, it's a real place where, you know, people get rained on, people eat donuts, and there are political machinations going on. And um, we can actually infer a great deal through environmental details. And um, I want to point out a few of those during this chapter. But before that, I want to talk about the general texture of the city. Because the city is only ever called the city. It's not really a real place, as I was saying. But it is a kind of a, a platonic elemental realm. It is a city's dream of itself. For all that cities have always represented progress, um, this is a city with no history, no past. It's impossible to tell where in the world it, it is. the game is set. Um, the signs are both in English and in a sort of weird, bastardised mixture of um, assorted um, Chinese and Japanese characters, which, as far as I can tell from my research, is not actually in an actual language, um, or it's a weird mishmash. This could be, you know, charitably to, you know, indicate that it's not a, any kind of a real specific place. However, uh, let's be honest, it's probably just that they um, grabbed symbols at random to make uh, text, you know, to make it look like it's a... They got you surrounded, Faith. Get yourself into the storm drain. A, sp a specific list place. That's not the right word, but you know what I mean. It's a place that has no literal location. It is itself a realm of metaphor. So, given that, it's interesting that we can learn the things that we do learn. 
If you watch with a sensible eye throughout this chapter, you will see in many places that there are um, logos emblazoned with the name Callahan. Callahan is the current mayor of the city, the person the Pope was opposing. Is it a sign of government spending on infrastructure projects, or is it a sign of corruption that the mayor's company happens to be the company handed all of the? Uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> is handed all of the, uh, you know, juicy government contracts. It's, you know, it's up to you to decide, but these are the things that are implied. So the reason why I fell off of that is because, um, if I remember correctly, the uh, swinging bars that you jump from, are they don't have any physics enabled. They're completely collision free. It really only matters whether or not you pass through a certain hitbox and then it plays the animation of you catching onto it. There's no kind of um, physics engine stuff going on there, which means that if you hit it at the wrong angle or in the wrong animation state, instead of... Uh, is this too high? No, we're fine. Instead of managing to get across, you uh, <laughs> just pass it straight through it and die. So similar to the Callahan thing, I want to point out that this says new stream energy. We're heading into the city's storm sewers. Um, This indicates that this must be a place which has severe seasonal storms, you know, typhoons and the like, because no city would invest in such a huge infrastructure project. But it also suggests that they're forward thinking enough that they've um, contracted an energy company to do this. Does that imply that perhaps there are turbines installed down here somewhere, ready to generate power off of that yearly influx of um, water? So, this image might look familiar to you, and if it does, it's because this section of the game was heavily inspired by the uh, municipal architecture in Saitama, Japan. Where they have a um, typhoon protection system, very much like this, with these vast, vast um, cathedral-like spaces under the city that the storm drains empty into, empty into, ready to store the water away from people's homes and businesses. Um, they're quite beautiful. Don't think those blues won't come down here. And I believe that they used to do tours, although I don't know if they still do. Anyway. Hey, I'm getting something on the wires. Shit. Looks like they anticipated you might duck in here and send a sniper team ahead. The framed image as we pass through that gateway is almost identical to the iconic picture of the uh, Saitama. Um, flood sewers, so it's pretty obvious a direct referent. Still, that again tells us things about this city. It's forwards looking. Its police like to murder unarmed rodents for no, pers uh, for no purpose. Now, I'm sure it's just meant to be a kind of a gag that like, yeah, of course the bored snipers would take pot shots at uh, passing rats, but that kind of it itself is also arguably metaphorical, because we can always interpret things regardless of what the author intended. Is it perhaps representative of the fundamentally callous nature of police forces, especially in totalitarian regimes? Completely unnecessary to kill that thing. On a similar note, there are only three kinds of life in the city at all. There are pigeons and ravens, you know, small bird life. And there are rats, and there are humans that you glimpse in the distance, or fight um, on the edge of rooftops. I suppose you could argue that the police aren't human, but that might be taking a little bit too far in the old uh, leftist bias. Anyway, so You're inside. Get out there of we go. Faith. You have to be careful here because the hitbox for getting into the uh, shimmying state is actually quite small, so it's very easy to just bonk off the edge and fall down the hole. So here a bit more clearly we can see that New Stream Energy has built this. So, as cities, as I was saying before, represent progress and a forwards motion through time. By the way, there's no way to dodge this. You have to take that falling damage. Um, you can do a wall run here and jump over if you want. However, if you try and do that while you're sliding down, or if you roll to try and roll on the platform, uh, or if you just try and jump straight across, all of that will result in you going down the hole. 
can jump across this one or wall run, but it's a bit finicky and I fail one time in three, so let's not risk it while I'm recording. Yep. Also, fun fact, if you lose track of what you're doing, like I did on a previous attempt to record this video, and have a coughing fit while standing under that door, it will come down and crush you. So, what the hell was I talking about? I was talking about the city. And it's kind of lack of history, that's right. So the city itself, we never see old build, we only see new build. This is a city that consists entirely of undressed concrete and oh shit. This is Jumping off those pipes can also be very finicky. It's, as far as I can tell, based on whether you are above or below the like center of your vision. When you know, if you're looking slightly up, you jump up. If you're looking directly across, or you will go directly across to the next pipe. And if you are looking down, you will go down. We do not want to go down. Down is bad. Up is where we are going. So oh, that was close. So yeah, um, this is a city that consists entirely of undressed concrete and, um, there's that Callahan logo, and uh, fresh acrylic corrosion resistant paint. This is a city that has no past. This is a city that is undergoing constant change and construction. I can't remember if I use this incredibly wanky phrase, but uh, it's a city's dream of itself. Only the future. Only fancy architecture. Only tomorrow. And for all that, it also um, really, really leans on the utopian angle. It looks like utopias are supposed to look. It's clean and shiny and bright, and there are vibrant colours everywhere. It's full of places named things like New Eden. And yet, it is a bad place. It's not a good place to be. The backstory hinted at at the start of the game mentions the November riots. That was the last gasp of freedom in this city. Ever since then, it's just this forever. And <laughs> this aside, this is quite beautiful. I love the, um, the framing as we ascend out of a literal underworld towards a beautiful free blue sky. And what do we find when we arrive in this beautiful utopia? The police, waiting for us with shotguns. So yeah, um, do not trust the police, they will kill you with shotguns. And uh, this is actually quite a nice area out here. It's fun to explore and there's a lot to see. However, the police will just kill you with shotguns. So generally speaking, it's best to zip through here as fast as possible and get through the door into that building before they shoot you full of, uh... I guess you don't get bullet holes from, uh, shotgun pellets, do you? Unless they're firing slugs. Anyway, that's not relevant. So, this is actually quite a wide area with a lot of fun spaces to run around in, as I was saying before it was rudely interrupted by buckshot to the face. But, um, yeah. If you're doing it right, you're only in that space for about a second and a half as you sprint from the emergence of the tunnel all the way through to here in this elevator Look, where you were nice and safe. Know something about Pope's murder, so don't let him wind you up, okay? He used to be a pretty decent runner. God knows who he's working for now. Here's the Callahan logo again, and some more of these sinister, pseudo-utopian images. While we wait politely. So this is, um, I think, the only chase section in the game. There's a few interesting things about it. Mechanically speaking, it's kind of fun because if you know what you're doing and you're good at this game, I am not. I have played this game a lot, but I am not good at it. Um, as you can see. To be honest, I'm just having a really off day today because I'm very, very sick. Um, anyway, so if you are good at this, it's very easy to not just keep up with... Uh, jackknife but to actually catch up with him completely if you do that he teleports ahead to the next point where he is supposed to be standing there waving at you and waiting for you to catch up like that the smug bastard so um yeah that's just amusing a <laughs> fun little aside similarly he uh does wait for you if you're too slow rather than too fast and this is both 
you know, a mechanical thing so that you never actually are at risk of losing him, and a pretty clever, um, ouch, narrative foreshadowing, because it's going to be relevant later on that he wants us to catch him. So I try not to be spoilery when I do these things. I'm not losing him, he's right here. Besides, he's waiting for me. Mind you, Merc wouldn't know that. Although how he can tell that I'm losing him is a bit of a question, because presumably he's hacking the police radios and stuff to get his information. Perhaps that's also a hint. Maybe. Smug bastard. Anyway. So yeah. The accents and names in this city are all very American. But we have Chinese signs and we have a uh, non-American climate because I don't think most American cities have, you know, risk of... <laughs> have a risk of uh, typhoons. So... Can you find another way through to him? This is actually the first and only time in the game that we will see some of the realistic consequences of parkour. In real life, one of the reasons why very few people do parkour is that if you screw up once, you will probably die. Similarly, um, in the real world, everything is everything is made of discrete objects, and every object has tolerances. It's almost impossible to tell at a glance whether or not something will take your weight, and if it will take your weight, if it is secured at the other end. Um, in a game world, you can trust that everything will be, because even in games with relatively robust physics, um, which this is not... Okay. Even in games with relatively robust physics, which this is not... Uh, you basically have a um, an understanding that the geometry of the level itself is inviolable. All of these things do not exist as discrete objects that are bolted together with flimsy physical contrivances. These are structures made of pure light. These are objects which exist in incorruptible physical forms. Therefore you can trust that you can spring off of a scaffolding and it won't collapse underneath you. Unless you're jackknife. I know what you're here for, Faithy. Just tell me what Icarus has to do with Pope's murder, Jack. I heard a cop did it. You heard wrong, then. You a fan of wrestling, Faith? Pope was a wrestling fan. He even employed an ex-wrestler to handle his security. Travis Burfield used to go by the name of Rope Burn. Is this going somewhere? Rope Burn? Well, he's really just a thug who got lucky. And sometimes people are too ignorant to see their place. Always want to swim in the big pond. Never see the bigger fish. If I were you, I'd start with that glorified slab of meat. Happy hunting, Faithy. Listen, I don't know about going to Rope Burn straight away. I'm not. I'm gonna see Miller. Oh, Faith, what are you doing? You gonna tell him about Jackknife? Not yet. He's still a cop. No matter what Kate says. And that is gonna be all from me for today. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go curl up in bed and cough out about two-thirds of a lung. You will never know how many I edited out of this episode. Bye! I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.